Hello and welcome to another edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. This is a unique podcast, uh, meaning weekly we interview guests or we talk about topics in a a long-form conversation. But if you uh, are finding the Rick and Bubba show via Rick and Bubba University, you may want to go to rickandbubba.com. Uh, Bubba and I host a a radio show and have been for over 28 years, every Monday through Friday, uh, from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Central Time. And uh, you also can find it archived on our YouTube channel, on on podcast archives that are different uh, than this one, uh, where you can catch the show on your own time. So, Bubba, today, one of our favorite topics, music. Rick, I love when you say it's a unique podcast, because it is. Because yep. any time yeah. I hear it, I think, what are those rubes doing? I do, too. I and, think the uh, same thing. So it is unique in that way that we actually are still going. You know, everybody loves music. Oh. It is the international language. Oh, it's, it's And look, we've got somebody that knows a little something about it today. Yeah, dance to the... On our show, those of you that may uh, not be familiar with it, our show's a show about anything, and we will stop the show... Well, I mean, we'll put the brakes on it. Uh, to, to talk about the topic of music. We love music uh, and uh, have a history with music, and, but uh, we don't know what Will Mason knows. Uh, Will Mason, Bubba, if you go all the way back, you can trace the first clunky little notes that he played uh, on the 76 key Casio back in 1989. Uh, he fell in love with music, and, and this was a that gift. That was 33 years ago. Yeah, this uh, a gift from his grandmama. I got married that year. That's how I know that. Yeah, you know that. Yeah. So uh, he, he started. He fell in love with music with that Casio, as many of us did. Uh, as far as uh, touring in a band called Moses Mayfield, uh, we'll ask him about that. He signed. Uh, they signed with Epic Records back in 2006. Uh, he now is the CEO of Mason Music. We'll tell you about that too. Uh, and of course, a lot like us, he also trains for triath- triathlons and marathons. I knew I knew him from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, uh, Will Mason, welcome to Rick and Bubba University. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing great. You guys have really done your homework. Well, we have, and plus the bow you handed me didn't hurt. Right. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so uh, we love the type and the spacing. <laughs> right. Yes. So, or the font, I should say. I guess music, 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 and we're going to talk about music. And you, we got a lot to cover. Um, this is one of those things. I, I, when and Bubba and I have talked about this. When I was young. I, I don't know why I really only had an interest in three things, and it really hasn't changed. I pretended to be interested in other things, but it, really the things that I was always drawn to were my dad was a football coach, so I liked football, um, and uh, I, I was just enamored with radio, and which uh, I've been fortunate enough to uh, to do for a living. I just I loved it. I would sit and listen to these DJs and all this cool stuff, and then my other love was music. I mean, and so to the point that. You know, I said, okay, think I'll play football, think I'll start some bands and see how far we can go with that, and I think I'll dabble in radio, and radio was the one that I finally made a way to, to make a living at it, but but I still have that that love of music, and it was it, we grew up with a football coach, so everybody thought he had us out in the backyard running plays and all that, which he did not. As a matter of fact, <laughs> that never happened. The thing that I think it, that, that probably of those three things that my dad influenced me the most, and this is shocking, music. My Isn't dad was the coolest, hippest. I mean, when all my friends' dads were listening to what was kind of corny music, my dad had me listen to the Eagles. He had me listen to Boston. He had me listening to the Doobie Brothers, Grand Funk Railroad. <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting there at seven years old with the 45 record of Walt Like a Man by Grand Funk Railroad. <laughs> you know, and, and everybody else is listening to Disney records, you right. know. And so uh, so you, you had a similar experience, it sounded like. You just fell in love with it. I did. A very different uh, parental influence experience with music, though. My parents really didn't listen to a ton of music. Really? It wasn't on in the house. I'm an only child, and I started off on classical piano lessons, so the only music I was listening to was Mozart. (laughs) Really? Yes. That's not Grand Funk Railroad. It's it's Uh, slightly different. Yeah, Yeah. and Mozart's version of Walk Like a Man, a little different. It's an interesting cover. (laughs) Did you enjoy that kind of music, or was it just what you had to do being in music. It was it was definitely what I had gotten signed up to do right. by someone else. I enjoyed the process of getting better at something. You know, everybody likes being good at something, so right. practicing and getting better and improving was fun. But, you know, as I got into my teenage years, I realized like, oh, there's like a whole other world of music out there that's probably a little bit more relevant to my, you know, 13-year-old brain. Right. So I started getting introduced to like Green Day and um, gosh, Smashing Pumpkins and all the bands that were around in the 90s. That's why I switched over to guitar. So things changed for me around 13 years old. Did you switch? I'm sorry. Did you switch to guitar the reason why most people do? You just thought it was cooler? 
Yeah, Could yeah. You get girls. The girl, yeah, I was gonna thing. say. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure girls played a part in that as the, well. well don't they, don't <laughs> yeah. they in elementary school, girls thought it was cool that I could play the piano, but it kind of wore off. Yeah. yeah, they never really screamed for clarinet players and stuff. That you is, know, I compared had much to of the that. rock guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, did it come natural to you? Do you have a natural talent for that? I, you think, or did you just technically grind it out till you were good at it? I think it's both. I mean, I think my grandmother was a pianist at her church, and my dad played a little bit when he was growing up. I think he played trumpet was like his instrument. But so there's some genetic component for sure. And but I really believe, especially now on the other side as a teacher, that everybody can get to a certain level. Okay, right. that would now technologies you, helped yeah. that out a lot, had it? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, now you're kind of getting into our first question since you are teaching now, and I want to go back and go through the your your climb through the music industry too and how you became a teacher but you, you just said something you know there there's people do you are you telling us that based on your years of doing this mm-hmm. there are gifted people no question you know it just comes easy to them it just comes natural to them but you're saying any of us can learn be taught how to play an instrument i have not had a student who couldn't at least get to a point where they could enjoy it i'm not saying they're all good right that you would listen to them and think wow that that person's great at music but I've had students, there's definitely a talent component, but there's also a hard work component. And when those things line up, then you see somebody who really has an opportunity to go out and be a talent. But sometimes it's a mismatch. You have somebody who's really talented that doesn't try, and that's a shame, because you watch them, you, you see how quickly right. they pick it up, and then they just put it down, and they never reach their potential. And then you see other kids who, they really want it, and they don't quite have the talent, so they are limited by that. And that's a shame, too. It's kind of hard to watch, but but they still can get to the point where they can enjoy playing the guitar. Well, I, I don't think I have any musical talent. I mean, my best my best musical moments are singing in the shower. <laughs> and, you know, everybody sounds good in the shower. Great acoustics. With the reverb and the, and the water acoustics. running. I did play trumpet in junior high a little bit. So I have a, a basic understanding of reading notes mm-hmm. and, you know, how long they should be and all that. But it's it's just amazing to me people who can play by ear and people who are really good and how they can just you can just mention something and they just start playing it and I'm like I could never remember that I mean even it's something I wanted to do I just never I, I can't imagine how they're doing that what a gift that is to be able to do that well I think we're all wired for that potential I think it's just the, the way that we're taught you know a lot of our teachers at Mason Music I mean and in so many ways Mason Music's a reflection and a reaction of what I experienced growing up. You know, I had this piano teacher that was very classical, was very by the book, put the sheet music up there, read what's Mm -hmm. on the page, and and then we'll move on to the next song. I never once picked the music. I never once really felt the music, Mm -hmm. you know, or connected to it or heard it on the radio or had a friend ask, hey, do you know that Mozart song? I'd love to hear that again. Um, So do you know Rondo (laughs) Alaturka? Yeah. (laughs) I've just been listening to that on repeat. (laughs) What songs did you want to hear? Rondo Alaturka. Yeah, exactly. Not so much. Yeah. But um, but playing by ear versus playing music, when I switched to guitar, the thing that changed for me, the first lesson I walked in and my guitar teacher asked me a question that I had never been asked. I've been doing piano for six years at that point. He said, hey, what do you want to learn? I was like, I was really taken back by that. I was like, I, I don't know, a rock and roll, Green Day? Like, give me something good, you know? And it really changed the course of my relationship with music because now all of a sudden it was three-dimensional. It was alive. It was something I was interested in. And my interest actually mattered and it had a role to play. And so the way we teach at Mason Music is very much kind of a response to that. We want to meet kids where their interest is so that we can build on that kind of common ground. Rick, do you remember I used to have this discussion with Mark Phillips all the time. I'm, I come from more of a technical background. And Mark would say something about, you know, an A or, a, you know, and I, yeah. I said, what frequency is an A? I know what a thousand hurt tone right. sounds yeah, like. Yeah. Where is it compared? And we used to have those discussions all the time. It was kind of funny, but what what a talent. But I y'all mean, found he, your, you found your way to work that out. Yeah, he, yeah we, he, we he understood what you were got, talking yeah, about. Yeah, we yeah. finally kind of got it in so we could understand. And I said, now what, what frequency? He said, well, carry that down to about 300. Okay, I know where that is. That's right. not right down here. So it, it was it was funny, but... There's so much technology now, oh, too, yeah. and, right. and I've seen, I, I don't know again because I don't follow it, but I've, I've seen kids with an iPad, and it looked like, you know, the music page, and, and they were they were reading things, and they could arrange it different. I mean, literally by dragging and dropping, and that, that, mm-hmm. that seemed like that was so cool to do that. Yeah, do, do you think that's good, or do you think that's almost uh, kind of hampered really, truly knowing how to do it? Uh, I mean, I think it's like any tool. It just depends on how you use it, uh, not good or bad. But 
I mean, you definitely, it, there's no shortcut to becoming a musician, you know, and I think that is the downside sometimes is people can, up and downside, you know, people can create and get creative and express and build a song without really knowing how to play an instrument. Right. That can be great because that may, they may put a song out that, you know, makes a bunch of people happy, you know, and it's good art. Um, but that can't be a substitute for the hours of practicing and learning and having conversations and actually building a deeper understanding of what's happening. Like, why does that chord sound good over this chord, you know, that note and whatever. So. Things like the chord buddy and things like that get people playing yeah. right away have right. become very popular. Is that is that something you cringe when you hear that? So that one in particular, I kind of have a hard time with because just as a guitar teacher, I think it's like learning how to walk with a crutch. You know, just go ahead and it's not that it doesn't take that long to play a D chord, you know, a couple weeks. But I think and, you know, you get the immediate gratification for sure. Right. of Being able to sound like you're playing a chord. Um but I don't know. I've, I've never used it, so I shouldn't speak too harshly against it because it may be a great way to get kids interested that otherwise would think. Yeah, I, can't I do think it. that's the good side of it mm-hmm. is, is you know because so many people start the guitar, they get frustrated, they put it down. For sure. So maybe with the right teacher in mm-hmm. the right school, it could be used as a tool. But then you would you would probably where I look at it, you would take that attachment off quicker than somebody would without a teacher. Mm-hmm. Okay, you got how where we can go. Right yeah. now, take it off. You got to learn how to do it yourself. Yeah, and I think maybe it could be used as some kind of introductory to keep you coming back for, sure. for lesson two and three. But now, an individual like me, see what I would think is probably what you're concerned about. Why do I need to learn to hold them if I've got this attached to the right uh, to my mm-hmm. guitar? You know, mm-hmm. but but as if a teacher's there with you, you can maybe use it. Sure. As, as as a as a training tool. Absolutely. Yeah. So right, we'll come back. We'll continue our conversation with Will Mason and Mason Music on the Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. This is the Rick and Bubba Show. Watch more at blazetv.com slash Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Back on this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, we're talking to Will Mason, CEO of Mason Music. So l- let me ask you a question about uh, your, your journey. So you, you, uh, you had piano lessons. You realize you wanted to play guitar as, as a lot of, especially guys do mm-hmm. when they've, somebody's made them take piano lessons. And, um, and then you start really getting interested in music. Tell us about the journey that led all the way to you being in a band that actually was signed uh, by Epic Records. What, what and happened? That's kind there? of a big deal. That is, yeah. Yeah. It kind of was a big deal. Yeah. 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 Um, did not expect it. Didn't plan on it. A lot of things in life are happy accidents. And I mean, I, I grew up in Mountain Brook here in Birmingham, which is a uh, sure. affluent community. And, and kind of the flow that I was caught up in was you go to college, you get a degree, you get a job, and you move on with your life. Mm-hmm. And so I had never even, it hadn't passed through my mind that <laughs> I would be in a band and that would be my job. Um, but I got to college and just, hated it. I mean, I just was not having a good time and realized this is not for me. I don't know what I'm doing here. My parents are paying for me to be here. It's a privilege to be here. And I, I think I'm wasting it. Let me take some time off to figure this out. And happened to be uh, friends with somebody who needed a guitar player in their band. I auditioned, got the job, and we took a break from school. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah. How did that call go? Oh, it was in person. <laughs> I was in person. Ooh. And listen, to make it worse, my parents are both educators. Oh, no. Oh. They both, and my mom especially, she grew up like poor on a right. farm in Western right. Virginia. And, and we're so, not talking about music teachers. No, no, yeah. no. The, and education for both of them was a way like out of poverty. Correct. So yeah. here's their spoiled brat son saying, ah, I'll pass. Yeah. I'm good. Mm. Thanks for so, putting this plan together for yeah. me, but I'm out. I'm throwing it out the window. So, uh, you know, they're awesome. They're like the best parents in the world. They're so supportive. They said... Hey, you know what? We love you. We'll still support you. We'll we'll be at the shows on the front row, but we're not like paying for you to live anywhere. Right. And I was like, oh, I hadn't thought this through. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not gonna live somewhere. I got so early living. I yet. started waiting tables and got an apartment and slept in a bunk bed with our drummer. Oh well, there you uh, go. So it was that is world. band life. Yeah, yeah it's band mm-hmm. life, and yeah. that, I'm so thankful. I learned some lessons I really wouldn't have learned otherwise. Right. Yeah. yeah. You won't learn those but lessons. But you guys had school, some. You? Yeah, you guys had some success though. We did. We did. We we had a brief little. You know, it was one of those uh, space shots where you get to say you went into outer space, but you didn't actually. Yeah. Right. Experience zero gravity. <laughs> yeah, right. Like yeah, I know. So we. Um, we, we got signed to a label, Epic Records. We got to record an album in some major studios and work with a big producer, and we got to go on tour with a couple of really big bands and got to be in a tour bus once. 
<laughs> one, <laughs> one time, yeah. For a six week stint, and yeah. then we we're back in the van, and it was. I mean, it doesn't feel real looking back at pictures. I'm like, that was me. Well, right. wait a minute, you you moved through that pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to go back. <laughs> how do you get signed by Epic Records? How did you first learn of this? So that was, and how 90s? did that all go down? It was. Uh, oh, it was early 2000s. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was yeah. 2005, 2006. Yeah, right. So um, we had a really good manager, I have to say. Uh, he did a really good job for us. And giving him the credit, he had the idea of filming a DVD as a promotional piece to try to attract some booking agents and other people to be interested in the band. And we had built a fan base here locally, and so there was a venue in town that we could sell out pretty much at will. Anytime we wanted to book, we'd get 400 people out and we'd sell it out. So we had a video crew come in and film it and shoot it and make it look like we were huge, you know. Right, yeah. Everybody right. knew the words. We know that know? concept. That know. Was, yes, yeah. yes. And and actually, the first time we did it, um, <laughs> we got we got the files back, and the audio was completely trash. Oh, um, wow. like static the whole time. Sure. And um, you know, somebody had to take a big bath in that. But we had to Ooh. do it again. And um, anyway, we got that DVD out and sent it to some people and. Um, we had interest, and so we got to go to New York and stay in a nice hotel and get schmoozed, and uh, and we were we got signed. So it was it was pretty wild. How so cool is that? How many yeah. original songs did y'all have? Gosh, I don't know. I mean, we we put out like uh, when you did it when you did a show. What was the percentage of covers versus? Oh, that'll well, give us some indication. Yeah, yeah. Before we got signed, it was probably half and half, right? You know, because we'd go play in Tuscaloosa, you know, college oh, sure. towns or whatever, it, yeah, and you got to yeah. do some covers. Sure. But after that, we would play mostly originals. We might throw one cover in on a set. So did you? Were you part of the writing process? A little bit, yeah. uh, mainly parts. I mean, okay. the songwriting was principally done by the vocalist. Okay, so. Yeah, I, I'm always interested, and I know Rick is, how different groups work that process yeah. out, you yeah. know, and, and we hear all kind of crazy stuff. But but again, on the epic thing, how did you learn you were going to New York? Who told you, and what did you think when you heard that? Gosh, I, I you guess. You were so fired up. I was so pumped, yeah. yeah. I mean, we had had some people come to see our shows, like flying in. They were label, like mm-hmm. A&R guys. So you knew they were out there? We knew that they were sniffing around, and, and we are you know, of course, you get the message like, hey, so-and-so is going to be in the crowd today, like, yeah. Hey, play really good. Yeah, right. yeah. Oh, man, I was planning on just wear your favorite shirt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So um, I don't remember exactly who told us or where we were, but I, I do remember we were changing drummers like at the time. Oh wow! And so all of a sudden, our new drummer, we we're like, "Hey, we need to get some extra rehearsals in because we're going to New York. And you're coming with us." Oh wow! Yeah. Well, he came at the right time. He, yeah, he's he Ringo Starr. Yeah. All right, we'll have to peep best. But yeah. So you go in, you sit down. What do they tell you when you do that? So you play showcases. So they set you up in a in a closed-off venue space. Basically, nobody else is there. There's no audience except for the label executives, and they just kind of sit back there and oh, wow. take notes, nod their heads, and you're trying to put on a rock show. Yeah, and you, you need like, that environment. To... Yep, you got to give wow. more energy than you're – you know, usually you get some of that back right. from the crowd, and you right. just got to – so they Make signed you to something that was like a developmental deal? It was a record deal. Full-blown. Full yep. So y'all got to do a album? An album, yes. Wow. We did. So they, they paid for the recording. They supported the release and the first tours. And Was that old school that you owed that money back? Like if no. you guys No? Well, okay. I think originally it probably was set up that way, but when they let us go, they let us go. Okay. Mm-hmm. And didn't say you owe us anything. Nothing mm-hmm. like well, that's that was fortunate. It worked out really well. Do yeah. you think that you because you know it, it really? Let's just get real about the, the the business of music. We're not talking about the love and the art of music. We're mm-hmm. gonna get, we're gonna get to that. Yeah. But the business of music, you can be just as good as the people who did really well, mm-hmm. and even have songs that are comparable. Yep. But just something about you know what they're, what, what they're into, who they put money behind, who they don't. Uh, you know, we I've yeah. heard those stories. Mark Phillips tells us a story right. about you know hotel and you know which was way before your time about you know they were on on a roll thinking they just went on American Bandstand right you know with Dick Clark and then all of a sudden the style of music changed what's popular changes you walk in your picture was here now it's not there anymore somebody else's picture is there yeah. and uh, so for you guys did it, was it about I remember in our deal. <laughs> We were told by somebody the kind of music y'all were doing, which is more like Guns N' Roses, mm-hmm. that's not selling. You need to do a song more like this other song we'd done that was more pop. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you know, th- then it all falls apart. And then the, all of a sudden the songs that we were doing, like sounds more like Cinderella and Guns N' Roses, that becomes the thing. We're like, wait a minute, this guy told us to go another way. <laughs> yeah. You know, but anyway, so all it's those wild. kind of things come into play. Absolutely. So well, I mean, for, for you guys, it was just like that – these are good songs. They sound good. Did the style of music change? The what was what was mod? Did that change? How, sure. What do you think happened? 
Well, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about us specifically, but I want to go back to what you were just talking about because that's a lot, you know, trends we, and then also the industry people who are the influencers oh, and yeah. the, how they play into it. But for us specifically, uh, it was a business thing. The label that we were on had a new CEO come in and he cleaned house. He wow. looked down the P&L. That's the kind of stuff we're talking about. And he yeah. said, hey, these are, and, and because they were hemorrhaging money. I mean, this is like yeah. after Napster had come out. That's right, and, which I was going to ask you about. Yeah, everybody's trying to figure out what's the new model going to be. And we've got to get rid of dead weight. And they look down, and this is a, a band that is in the red heavily because they literally just released their first record right. that we just paid six figures for, and they haven't recouped yet. So and there's a list of 20 bands or so that got cut that day. And so we didn't feel too badly about it. It wasn't personal. There were some great bands on that list that were now without a label. So for us, it was just business. We hadn't even had a chance. I mean, right. our, our record right. was just coming out in stores. Did, did it? Do you still have the record? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did Did it just take the legs out from under you guys, or you guys goes, let's try again? So was it just too big a blow? It was. It was for me personally. <laughs> okay, and for you. Yeah. Yes, I had just gotten married. Okay. Yep. And so I was. I mean, and our whole life was planning. Yeah. You know, we were banking on. All right, he's going to be touring with this band, and they're going to you know continue to grow. And we really were being, there's a fork in the road moment. Are we going to keep going? And basically, keep going is starting over right. at that point. Of course it is. On your own, go back to, and, you know, not that I was old, but I wasn't 18 anymore. <laughs> um, and so I couldn't I couldn't commit to that. I said, I, I think I'm going to have to split up and go my own way, in the words of Fleetwood Mac. Well, I think a lot yeah. of people forget, and I remember talking about this, and people thought we were crazy. Because, you know, we were in bands trying to make just like you were it, a little earlier in a, a little bit of a different era. And I remember, like, if you were a good band that could get good gigs at bars and events and play a little something here and you were doing, you know, 50-50 covers or whatever, and somebody said, well, now we need you to try to go big, which means all this money you're making, you're going back to being poor. Mm-hmm. So you had to go poor to try to be big. Yep. And sometimes you love that go, but this income we got to have, well, you got to give this thing because we can't have you over here playing bars, right? doing covers and nope. doing have, when, when we need to start developing you, but you got to give all that up and all mm -hmm. that money up to try to make it. And a lot of bands just never were like, look, I can't go broke to try to be big, Yeah. you know, and which sounds weird, uh, but you almost can get trapped if you don't start out from the very beginning mm -hmm. saying, we're doing original stuff. We're going to try to be seen. Yep. And of course, in the days we were trying it, it was crazy difficult mm -hmm. because you literally had to be seen somewhere physically, physically yeah. by someone who had influence, who then would get you in the studio. And you couldn't even do a demo; mm. there was no technology to do it. Right? That was, it was of any, only big studios. Yeah, that you had to go into expensive. a giant studio that was super expensive, do a demo, and then they would shop the demo. And so it, it was it was crazy. Do you think now? Because, you know, really, if I have some decent, pretty affordable recording equipment in my garage or in my bedroom, and I'm, and I'm, you can do it with Garage Man. You Garage Man. And now they, <laughs> free you, software. You know, and they're putting it, they, they can do albums that sound pretty good mm -hmm. and uh, that, that are real inexpensive, especially a demo. Yep. And then they can get their own YouTube channel started. They can put stuff out on streaming, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, really they go worldwide, which I, you've never been able to do. Yeah, before. I know musicians yeah. now. They're putting out albums. They have no record deal. They just record them, and then they put them out on all the different streaming services. Uh, but we'll come back because I'm going to talk about how that's changed. But I think that's yeah. good for yeah. the musicians because it is. Then the people decide, not mm -hmm. some yeah. AR guy. But boy, the, the bad the algorithm. Those, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to yeah. say, but the bad is. It's a flood. There's a ton of <laughs> trash out there. <laughs> yes. yes. Everybody can put out some sort of There's album. no gatekeeper. Right. You know, yeah. there used to be, there's the tastemakers that would sit there and listen and decide, yeah. is it good enough or not? I like that name, the yeah. tastemakers. The tastemakers, yeah. yeah. Which is, is good and bad because then you're kind of at the whim of, what does this DJ like? You know, if he doesn't like my stuff, then I'm not going to get played. Whereas now the democratization of the internet, it's really is like a, anybody can get on there and put it out there. And then it still has to get found, but it has to get found by individuals enough times, quickly enough that the algorithm picks it up and pushes it to the top of the whatever. Yeah, well, know. we tell the people trying to get in this business uh, now that podcasts see mm -hmm. podcasts has now become the 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 uh, you know show radio. Ver, radio version of that. Yeah, but what they don't understand is you have no idea 
how many people you need listening to it for one advertiser to care. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it's astronomical numbers. Yep. And so, yeah, there's a lot of podcasts out there, but there's only a few big ones yep. You know that are making. And they hear that one made all this kind of money, but you have no idea how many downloads that, that, that show has yeah. and how many people and what the advertisers are looking for. I mean, if you're not tens of thousands, they're not even interested. Right. You know, and you think you're doing pretty good because you got 1,200, which isn't a bad number, sure. but but it's just you just can't make any money at it. Well, and the same thing's true for streaming, whether it's YouTube or right. Spotify or whatever. You know, you, you put up a YouTube video and get 50,000 views, and you're like, holy, you know, this is going to be great. I'm going to get all this ad revenue. It's like yeah. 12 cents. You right. know, <laughs> whatever. And, and like you said, just with podcasts and music, yeah. you're going to have to be broke to, to make it. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's come back. We'll continue our conversation with Will Mason on this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Well, let me tell you this, Tommy Johns. Uh, every time we talk about Tommy Johns, uh, I'm wearing a pair, and maybe yep. that's TMI. But I got I, mine on right now. I know you do, yep. and I was I was afraid you were going to say that. Yep. But but you know why you have them on? Because I like them. Because you're loving them, and and you, and Tommy Johns realizes, and they have things for women too. They got great stuff for women. But Tommy Johns has said, when it comes to men's underwear, nobody has cared. Okay, because men are assigned our we're assigned our underwear, you know, when we you know reach a certain age, and then we just keep them the rest of our lives. But but you know we really shouldn't do that. And and Tommy Johns is saying, look, there's a better way with the heat that we're dealing with right now. I mean, it, your underwear can just I mean be you really want to be be breathable, you want it to be cool, you want to feel fresh. And Tommy John's uh, design does that. Dozens of comfort innovations, and they keep you looking and feeling cool all season long. I mean, whether you're just lounging around, maybe you're going out, to, you know, and walking, uh, you know, outside or hanging around. Tommy John's, uh, this is the difference. They don't have customers; they have fanatics, and we're two of them. Seventeen million pair. They that they that yeah. they sell doing something right yeah uh, so so Tommy John's underwear and loungewear is the most comfortable that you have ever worn and how about this if you don't think that's true then how about this they're free that's their guarantee it's not the, if it's not the most comfortable pair you've ever had they're free so go get twenty percent off right now and and shop at tommyjohn.com slash rick bubba tommyjohn.com slash rick bubba check the site for details. Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, we're back. We're talking to Will Mason. Uh, you know, he talked about he was a musician, how he learned to play. He got in a band that had some success, got a deal with Epic Records uh, in 2005, somewhere in there, seven? Six. Yeah, and uh, and then, of course, uh, that, that didn't work out. Uh, when when did you start down this road of where you are now? I think I like music enough. I'd like to teach it. Again, it was another accident. Okay. I mean, I, I after I had quit playing in the band, which was like the hardest oh, decision. No, I mean, that was a harder conversation no, than I telling my parents that I, I wasn't going to go to college anymore. I remember. Um, so, you know, I, I was, didn't have a plan. Didn't have a plan B. You can't have a plan B if you're going to really give mm -hmm. it your all, no. you know, because that's always going to be in the back of your mind going, hey, but it's going to be okay. So yeah, you're not going to sure. give it 100%. That's what so, Jack Black said. That's mm -hmm. right. You're right. He told us that in <laughs> well, School of Rock. We're basically the same person. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, Isn't right, that a great movie? Right, right, right. Oh, man. It's a lot, it is of, lot of truth in that. Definitely. Definitely. My kids love it. Yeah, There's sure. a lot of history in it, too. I mean, he yeah. really does a good job uh, stitching a lot of that together. Yeah, absolutely. And I play a, an SG as well, so I just oh, good. love it. Yeah. So, so when you said, what, what started that now became Mason Music? What did that? How that road look? Yeah, so I was just figuring out whatever I could do to make money, you know, like yeah. to support my family, my new family. And so uh, I started playing guitar at my church. Uh, a friend of mine, I actually been out of church for a while. Yeah. And uh, a friend of mine worked at this church and said, hey, we need guitar players and um, we'll pay you. You know, it was a hired gig. And I said, yeah. okay, well, cool. I, I need money. I know how to play guitar. Let's do it. And we'll, <laughs> we'll deal with the church thing later, you know. Ended up being me getting back connected with God and Praise being back God. in church. Yeah, for yeah, sure. That's great. So, um, but I started playing guitar at church, and this kid came up to me one day and uh, after a service and said, hey, can you show me how to do that? Like, teach me how to play guitar. And I said, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not never, sure. You'd never taught anybody. I, I had taught one of my friend's little brothers, like, three lessons in I, high school. I play smoke on the water. Super awkward. <laughs> yeah. It just was awkward. Yeah, and, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so I looked at this kid, and I was like, Sure. Let's let me let me talk to your mom and let's figure this out. And so that was my first guitar student. Were you surprised that you said sure? No. Did you did one of those days? I'm a people I'm, pleaser. I say yes to everything. Okay. okay. I'm a, well. Hold on. I, I said this in a staff meeting recently. I'm a recovering people pleaser. Yeah. yeah. That's good. I Be gotta, careful. You know this thing's going live. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I started teaching him, and then his neighbor called and said, "Hey, I heard you know you're teaching my mm -hmm. my 
neighbor's son, could you come over here afterwards and start driving all over and teaching lessons in people's living rooms? Oh, and, that's cool. Yeah. And yeah. so it started because I, I honestly remember this because I know how tough this business is that you're in. I can remember because Mason Music is is in our, our city where we live, and I've always I got this interest in music, and I drove past one of your first locations. Mm-hmm. You're going to love this. I literally said, I oh, bless their heart. <laughs> you know, because th- this is such a hard business to make. It in. There's no Gosh. way. You know, I thought I, I love what they're trying to do. You know what I mean? But I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I just, and it worked. You, you were, blessed my heart. Right. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. That so, made all the difference. Yeah, no, yes. well, well uh, because I was pulling for you because yeah. I, I, you know, you just don't see music stores and music stuff make it much anymore. It's tough. And uh, and so uh, sadly, uh, but anyway, um, especially if they're going to try to, but you 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 guys had a really smart plan that I didn't know at the time. Mm. And so I find out that you guys are doing this deal, which I thought was great because what you just said, and my kids had been through it, Mm -hmm. go down the road to miss so-and-so and and take piano lessons is good for you. Because I I, I think it's, and I want to ask you about this, and we've talked about this, I think it's good even if you don't pull it off. Yeah. That everybody should learn, try to learn to play a musical instrument. Sure. I think just you're, I think you, well rounded. We're not yeah. talking about they have to do it for a living or anything yeah. like that. I just think it's good to get involved in trying to learn how to play music. Yes. Uh, you know, pick an instrument, do mm-hmm. something. And so I'll, I was telling mine, everybody pick an instrument. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, and so, you know, you always start out, well, I guess piano or guitar, it, it seems to come down to those two. And so you go down to see Miss So and So, who's, who's good as gold, mm-hmm. as sweet as she can be. And, and, and of course, how long do you think it took before my sons were like, dad, come on. We're, I mean, <laughs> what's the over under? Yeah. We're, we're, mm-hmm. we're dead. We, we just, you yeah. know, and, and one of them, I think had even some natural stuff and one would had to work a little harder at it, but it was still good for them. Yep. And so then I heard a completely different approach, which was you. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Just like you do, like a, a sports league, you're doing a rock band league. Yes. Yeah, I saw and, and, that. Yeah, what what and, is and, that? What a brilliant idea! Well, so uh, t- tell us how that happened. So the the funny thing is, all the best ideas that we've ever had weren't our ideas. Uh, of course, they were our customers' ideas. Okay, and that's one of the <clears throat> biggest things I've learned about business is if you just listen to your customers, they'll tell you what they want. Yeah, and they will tell you how to stay in business. Yeah, you already see my email. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. You're, you're right, but see, because what you were doing there mm-hmm. is er, no one wants to go play piano a, a, with Miss So and So, and and, and like, like your grandmother and your aunt and all those people. Everybody says, "I want to be in a band. Yeah, you I want to be in a rock band or a pop band or, or country band yep. or or whatever." And you or whoever came up with this idea mm-hmm. said, "Well, let's just teach them that way." Yeah, I mean, you you put you relegate music to the same category as broccoli. Yeah. If it's just good for you. Right, yeah. You know, right. oh, yeah. And how excited do our kids get about eating broccoli? Right, yeah. Um, so, you I'm know. I'm not going to say it, Rick. No, he loves broccoli, but he didn't when he was a kid. <laughs> same. So, yeah, same. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, I hated it. <laughs> I love Brussels sprouts. What right. happened? You I know, know I'm not you, proud of that either. You yeah. look like you love Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I don't look like I love broccoli. <laughs> You're seasoning yours with something different than we are. Oh, <laughs> Go man. ahead, yeah. So no, we we had already. I, I say that our customer gave us the idea. They they added to what we were doing. We had a we were calling it um, rock. What do we call it? I don't know. Rock band group lesson, something like that. And we were doing this, and we had a couple dads approach us. And I will never forget this. This was so cool, and it shows you how much parents love their kids. And that's what we're here to do. You know, right. you talked about like it's not necessarily that everybody's going to be great. You know, there's one in a million who's going to sure. make it and do whatever. We're not here for the one in a million. I mean, we're here for them, but we're here for everybody else. Right. You know, yeah. we're here because we think music's good for everybody. We think music is for everyone. I think Absolutely. that we are wired as human beings. No question. To be musical. I mean, our hearts right. have a beat, yeah. for goodness sake. Absolutely. So anyway, <laughs> uh, we had been doing this, and this dad approached us, and he said, hey, I want to have a meeting with you guys. I have an idea. And actually, there are three dads, but there's one that was leading the charge. And he said, listen, I have two kids. One of them is an athlete. He does baseball. He does football. I have coached every team. I have bought all the gear. I have been to all the tournaments. We have driven everywhere around the world. That's how we connect. That's how he knows I love him. My other kid, not an athlete. We tried. Didn't stick. Right. And and the dad was actually a musician. He was a drummer in a band. And he said, he, he loves music. He's doing lessons with you guys. And I want there to be more opportunities that I can buy him the gear and show up to the practices. And how can we make that happen to where... He can have the same opportunity that my sports kid, my sporty kid, my sporty spice had over here with music. <laughs> we think you should do this as like a sports league, but music. And I was Great like, idea. well, we're doing that 
with one band right now, it'd be great. That's what we hoped. That's what we aspire to. How are we going to get there? And he said, I'll take care of that. So, I mean, he put together a registration form and went around and talked to all of his sports friends who had siblings who Ooh. weren't sporty or whoever we ended up with. That's funny. In the first season that we really called it and branded it Rock Band League, we had six or seven bands, so it, it really just popped up out of the ground. So they competed against each other? That's or the thing. Showcased it's the coolest thing. But two, two of mine went through it. It, it. it was the coolest thing. I thought to myself, if I if their age could have had this, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I wouldn't have been able to believe it. That is the yeah. the chorus that we hear from everybody is, man, I wish this had been around when I was a kid. Me too. Yeah. I had to like awkwardly call my friend and say, hey, do you want to jam? Right. <laughs> you know, like, and, and, and the fact that, you know, I was, I was an athlete. There's the combo too, but mm-hmm. I, this is something I like too. Right. Well, there just wasn't anything available it's for that. Not Either for or. that side of my interest, so mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I could have done both. Absolutely, you know. Uh, but, all right, so let's come back. I want to talk more about that uh, when Rick and Bubba University the podcast continues. All right, so Patriot Mobile, you know, th- there's all kinds of. Uh, pro- anytime we go out and you're thinking about the products that you really need, um, sometimes you think, well, th- my worldview is not really being represented, but I don't have any choices, so I'm spending my money with people that I may not even agree with spiritually or or politically or or, or whatever the case may be. Well, Patriot Mobile is America's only Christian conservative uh, mobile phone provider. They've been uh, on the front lines fighting, uh, you know, for for a lot of the things that you say, okay, this this sounds a little more like the way I see the world, uh, so I really don't have to compromise uh, because I don't have a choice. No, you don't. Patriot Mobile is, is, is different than other providers, but I'll tell you where they they are is good, and that is the coverage they provide. The service is is outstanding, uh, and uh, you know what they they use the same towers and and the same coverage that some of your major brands use. Uh, the major carriers they got the same nationwide coverage uh, for almost any budget. Uh, but at the same time, you don't feel like you're compromising things that mean a lot to you uh, just for a service. So go to patriotmobile.com uh, slash Rick Bubba or call 927-PATRIOT, and this Rick Bubba code is going to get you free activation, so you won't have to pay for that. If you're a veteran or you're a first responder, let them know because they have special discounts to get you to save even more money as our way of saying thank you. So join the movement now and switch to patriotmobile.com slash Rick Bubba. All right, we're back with with uh, Will Mason, Mason Music, talking about music, and we love music. We were talking about the the rock band league, and I, I did. Two of my sons got involved in this. One uh, wanted to learn to play the drums, which op- opens up another deal. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to hear mm-hmm. somebody without a band learn how to play the drums. <laughs> no, they, they, I, they, I have to apologize every time. The, oh, boy. Yeah, I somebody was, signs up for drums yeah. that I'm friends with. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I wish <laughs> I'd had – I learned to play the drums because the band we were forming says, what do you think about drums? And I said, okay, I'll try that. I didn't know anything. My first drum set didn't have a snare drum. <laughs> and, and somebody brought oh. one and said, you're going to need one of these. Yes, you know. Right. Yeah. And then I learned the t- – you know, and then we started from there, and then we all tried to learn to play by ear and put mm-hmm. together a band and got better as we went. But drums is one of those things. If you, you know, it's it, it, most people leave because you know, unlike a guitar or a piano or even a horn, or I mean, the only person enjoying someone learning to play the drums is the person playing the drums. That's true. <laughs> yeah, and, and so what you did though, if you put together this format, now when we're putting a band together, you can kind of work on. All of it as an ensemble, or uh, mm-hmm. that 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 helped drummers and bass players. I mean, yep. whoever says I'd love to have bass lessons, mm-hmm. but but what is every band looking for? Yeah, we need, oh, we need a bass band. player. Yeah. You know, yep. let me tell all of you out there: learn to play the bass. You will always uh, you, be in high demand. You'll be working. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's just like when they say if you can sail, you'll never be out of a job. Right, if right. you can play the bass, you'll always be in somebody's band. Yep. You know, and you can go play the other instruments too. If that's not enough for you, but learn the bass. Start, yeah. And it, I'm not saying it's easy, but it looks like it's easier it's than less some of the things yeah. i mean i'm not great at math but yeah. four is less than six <laughs> <laughs> yeah so 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 it, the, the our my sons enjoyed it now they didn't yeah. end up staying with it or do it professional yeah. they dabbled in it they really enjoyed it and there were other interests that took them away into other things sure. but now you know they know the basics mm-hmm. of music and and can kind of you know they know more about it than they did it makes them enjoy music more yeah if nothing else their appreciation is deeper yeah. You know, and the thing about drums, like nobody, you don't sit down and say, hey, guess what song this is and play it on the drums. Right. Like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I can do Walk This Way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a few yeah, songs, yeah, yeah. but 
you know, and, and that is so true. It's reflected in our registrations too. Yeah. Like we have to have a limit on how many drummers we accept into the program. <laughs> yeah. And we're yeah. over the limit. We've got to like retool our whole registration yeah. process because we have a waiting list for drummers and then we're like scrounging for bass players. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's true. crazy. Isn't it? yeah. So, yeah. Hey, you know, I, my musical career really hit bottom when I was told I was playing tambourine wrong. <laughs> you know, that was, uh, that's when I really <laughs> thought, you, you know, something. I need to get out of you this. You played in front boom of thousands chick, of people. Boom chick, you you know? played, well, you didn't play. You stood in front of thousands of people. <laughs> yeah. It's harder than it looks. Yeah, right. I'll give you that. Tambourine is, you actually have to like anticipate, you right. know, because yeah. as soon as you start moving, then the sound. Yeah. Of, yeah, yeah it's, it's, watching uh, Bubba, Bubba and Adler talking about boom chick is one of my favorite things we do because <laughs> uh, Adler and his whole family very gifted uh, yes, musicians yeah, and uh, so i know we don't have a whole lot of time but i want to get this in we only got about five more minutes uh tell me about uh, the mason music foundation yes so this was something that I, I was passionate about from when we started the company but we needed to get off the ground before we were able to really have some solid ground to give back to the community and so after we'd been in business for a few years, we started thinking about, I mean, Birmingham's an interesting city. Yeah, it is. It really um, is. A lot of history and, and still a lot of division in the city. I mean, there's certain parts of the city that are very well to do and other parts that are not. And so we had obviously been, as a business, wanting to be a part of the place where people had disposable income to sign their kids up for the extra stuff, right? They're called extracurriculars for a reason. They're extra. Um, But just became more and more aware over time that there are other families not far from here that are part of our community that do not have the same opportunities right. that I had growing up. You know, my parents could pay for me to have private lessons. And this stuff isn't being taught in school. You know, the funding for public education and arts, I mean, it's gone. Right. And so there's kids that just aren't going to have any exposure to music unless they have a family member mm-hmm. or their church has a program. Mm-hmm. So we, uh, we started just um, teaching for free lessons at a school, an after-school program, and uh, then we started raising money. We formed a nonprofit, and now we have a location that's under construction where we're going to be able to have up to 200 students a week, um, and we have scholarships. So wow. we, we write grants. We sure. have private donations. We do fundraisers, and we've been able to give, I don't know, thousands of lessons by this point in time to families who otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity. And we've got some kids now. Like my, One of my personal favorite stories is a student of mine named Brianna, Look her up. Um, she's going to be, she's going places with music. But she went from taking guitar lessons to, hey, she started writing music. Oh, yeah. We started doing some collaborations together. We signed her, even though we're not technically a label. We got a contract written up and I wanted to sign her so she felt special. So she's our signed artist and she's 15. <laughs> and so she's recording in our studio. But that talent and, was there. And she if had, she didn't have the opportunity mm-hmm. to, to light that spark, mm-hmm. you know, because I mean, the talent's there, but what if, what if they never knew it? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's it's literally and I'm I'm not taking credit for this, but yeah. she these are words from her mouth. It's changed her life. Yeah. She's now going to a fine arts school. She's going to Alabama School of the Fine Arts. She applied and got in. Wow. Um and that's a totally different direction than her life would have gone otherwise. So So do you I ha- mean you really are kind of a school of rock. Yeah, he is. It, no, they have Inspiring. the school of rock. They have the. I'm telling you, it's the coolest. <laughs> Look, I want to come see the, these rock bands. Come play. to they, come to RBL. I, they yeah. they work, Bubba, because like say Brooks Look, and Brooks even hipped it up. The, the, RBL, the, the RBL. Mm-hmm. That's right. But they, they put together a set of. Mm-hmm. I think I remember it was like three songs. Three songs. Yeah, and and so then all of a sudden you go and they're all ready, and now it's time for the for for the actual games to begin, mm-hmm. and That's they fun. they've all worked their three songs, and you and they judge the bands on where they are. And like I say, I don't even remember where my kids' bands finished. I just remember they had a blast. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so like, the competition uh, is kind of an afterthought yeah, just to yeah. keep it interesting, you know. It and was that's so only cool. the end of the season, about all the bands you got to do. It. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, <laughs> we're running out of time, but if you, can they find out more? I know you talked about some things you're doing, the Woodlawn Theater Project. Uh, can you sum that up in two minutes? Sure. Uh, as a part of the nonprofit, we were looking for new space, and we just randomly came across this building that the owner said, I'll sell you the building. I said, I don't have any money, but let's find some people that see the potential here. So we bought the building. It's under construction, and it's going to be a music venue in cool. downtown Historic Woodlawn, which is a community in Greater Birmingham, well, in Birmingham City. Yeah, my dad used to be the football coach there. Yes, and that Woodlawn is a very interesting community with yeah. an interesting story. Again, and a part movie of, about them. Yeah. Yep, part of the Birmingham story. So, so there's a theater there. I didn't even know that. No, well, you wouldn't. It doesn't look like it. Uh, yeah. It was the movie theater from like 29 to 57. And then wow. it's been a bunch of different you, things. Since you are then. refurbishing it. Well, we're not going to renovate, or we're not going to refurbish it to what it used to be. Yeah, but, but you're going to make it a music hall kind of it thing. It's going to be a music venue. Yep, 250 wow. person standing room, and um, yeah, we're going to put on shows there. 
That is And great. it'll be the same building in the other side, down the other hallways, where our students who Woodlawn at the nonprofit are going to be taking lessons. So it all worked together. It'll all work but together. They'll get fantastic. to see, hey, this is what, what could be. So they have a picture right in front of them. Well, we'll, have to, we'll have to have you back. We didn't sure. Even, we, didn't even, we didn't even get to talk about core prog- progressions that make us feel strange. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll get that next time. Yeah. Will Mason, thanks for being with us. Absolutely. And, and we'll make Thank all you, your Will. information uh, available so people can find out what you're doing, not just here, but, uh, but anywhere in the country. Uh, Thanks to all of you, too, for joining us for this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast.